name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We're um, get moving into the second week of Easter, of the Easter season, Paschal Tide. And first I want to just mention something that I could have mentioned last week, but I um, feel like there's enough time. So this is an interesting idea, which I, which I found in this book, Family Customs, um, by Helen McLaughlin. And it mentions having little... Um, little antiphons for grace, even having children making up like little uh, little cards. And this is a great way to learn little short little phrases from the scriptures um, that are appropriate for the liturgical season. And um, so it has, for in, for instance, um, for Easter, it has the short ver the verse from Psalm 117, verse 24, this is the day the Lord has made, alleluia, let us be glad and rejoice in it, alleluia. So, that, so you could do that right before praying grace or as part of grace at meals. Another great verse, too, is the one from Colossians uh, chapter 3, 1 through 2, which is uh, prayed often in the divine office throughout the, throughout the season. And that's uh, also, it's also the, the epistle on the Easter vigil. Therefore, if you be risen with Christ, seek the things that are above, or Christ is seated at the right hand of God. You can always add an alleluia. Mind the things that are above, not the things that are upon the earth. Hallelujah. So it's a great way, especially if you're doing that at all the meals, then it's a great way by the end of Easter, these verses will be, you'll have them memorized. And it's just a great way at each of the meals to remind yourself that you're celebrating the joy of Easter. So I'll have a little link. I have a, uh, I don't have a link for the, the, for how to do it, but I'll have the link for the, or I'll just have the, in the notes, um, those scripture verses. Uh, so, of course, the most recent name for this coming Sunday um, is Divine Mercy Sunday. So I'll have, I, have, uh, I have the link for a bunch of videos you could watch on that, on Formed. But I'm going to focus on a couple of um, potential future saints who, who's, um, uh, of course, they don't have feast days yet, but they both were, uh, died in the coming week, April 17th and April 18th. Uh, so, so April 17th, um, and I'm going to do 18 first, even though it's a little out of order. Um, so the uh, April 18th is Venerable Cornelia, Cornelia Connolly, who was born in Philadelphia in 1809 and died in Sussex, England in 1879. So she was born Episcopalian and her, and she married a, an Episcopalian minister and they had children and early on, uh, they were assigned in Mississippi, and she, he, he, the husband began to have doubts about uh, his Episcopalianism and was beginning to uh, consider Catholicism, and he he did convert, and she and she soon after um, had a um, uh, was convicted too of the truth of, of the Catholic faith, uh, but he had some interest in becoming a priest and at the time they were not giving dispensations as they have in recent years for um for uh, for someone to be, remain married so it would mean it would mean they would have to s separate and after a number of um a couple of retreats and going on some years um eventually he discerned that he was called to the priesthood and she accepted that as part of god's will and they separated and then eventually, um, not not too ma too long after that, she um, after watching um, a play uh, from one of the children of the Society of the Holy Child Jesus, she um, she she uh, felt a calling that she was called to religious life, and um, so it was. It's a kind of it's in many ways. It's kind of a sad and complicated story. Uh, but at some point, he actually apostatized, um, rejected the Catholic faith, and sued her um, for for divorcing, uh, for separating, and tried to get her to, again to be married to him. So he, she suffered a lot, um, and in those in those in those years, um, but she remained, remained faithful to the, the vow she made into the, in the religious order, and uh, and this is just a few quotes from her. She said. Um, she said, I'm all gods, um, and she said, uh, and it was said of her that, uh, 
Throughout everything, even as she aged, she obtained the childlike joy and sense of humor. Many could feel the presence of God around her, and the sisters noted the brightness of her face when she received Holy Communion. Um, and uh, so she died at the age of 71 and was declared venerable back in 1992. Um, and I'll, I'll, I have a link to a little for a little article about her as well. The other one, um, and that was again Venerable Cornelia Connolly. The other one is Venerable Maria uh, Kapos, who was born in Lithuania in the year 1880 and died in Chicago in 1940. Um, so she actually was a um, very happy shepherdess girl in Lithuania growing up. Her brother became a priest, and as she became a young lady, um, he requested that she could come to be his housekeeper in the United States. And so she came to Pennsylvania, to Scranton, Pennsylvania, as his housekeeper, worked there for a while. And it's the first time in her life, actually, that, interestingly enough, that she was exposed to seeing religious sisters and their habits and everything. And it made her begin to think about a religious vocation. And it was presented to her a need for, especially for attending to the Lithuanian uh, population, Catholics that had come to, from Lithuania to the United States. And she was actually asked to begin um, a new religious order on their behalf. And so she spent some time in, 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 with the Sisters of the Mercy of the Holy Cross in Switzerland, came back to, in 1907, the Congregation of the Sisters of St. Casimir, the special patron of Lithuania, um, was, was, a, was approved by um, Pope St. Pius X. And, um, so, and she took the name of Sister Maria because she was greatly devoted to Our Lady. And uh, so she would become the mother superior. And uh, even though the focus was especially on education and uh, they established a mother house in Chicago because of the heavy, the highest uh, Lithuanian population was present there. But it was during the, uh, the influenza epidemic in 1918 that they decided that it was necessary to, it would be helpful to learn skills in nursing. Um, so they indeed undertook that and would be would also undertake works work in that in that area of those those spiritual and corporal works of mercy related to nursing and um, she was diagnosed with cancer in 1932 but lived another another eight years uh, and it said um, uh, after a few, a few, just after she um, she died, the newspapers carried articles with headlines: "Sainted um, Sainthood sought for Mother Maria," and Chicago mourns to, uh, its second Cabrini, which is a reference to Saint Francis Xavier Cabrini, who was a who was a canonized saint who f had a religious order that uh, attended to the the uh, needs of the uh, Italian um, immigrants. Um, so she was declared venerable in the year uh, 2010. So a couple of very different uh, but interesting uh, uh, possible future saints um, that died this coming week that you might want to learn about. And I also have a link from her, the website where, she, where they have the order that she founded. And I will just conclude with a, very, a short um, a poem from this book, St. Mary's Book of Christian Verse, which I've mentioned before, from Alfred Edward Hausman. If in that Syrian garden, ages slain, you sleep and know not you are dead in vain, nor even in dreams behold how dark and bright ascends in smoke and fire by day and night. They hate, the hate you did, sorry, the hate you died to quench and could but fan. Sleep well and see no morning, son of man. But if the grave rent and the stole rolled, rolled by at the right hand of majesty on high, you sit and sitting, so remember yet your tears, your agony and bloody sweat, your cross and passion and the life you gave. Bow hither out of heaven and see and save. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.